Good morning. Today we look at uh, chapter 3 of the book of James. And James starts out with a, a warning. He says, not many of you should become teachers. Or, you know, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. And I think about that for teachers. And, and in the parenthesis of my Bible, I have um, also written, uh, this includes pastors and, and other you know, leaders that way in some ways. But you think about a teacher. And I mean, I know a lot of really good teachers. And I remember some good teachers that I had. And I also remember some teachers that I didn't think were so good. And the ones that weren't good teachers, in my estimation, were the ones that, that just didn't seem to have patience with kids. They didn't have the ability to put up with a little bit of tomfoolery from the kids, you know? I mean, so, I mean kids are kids. I mean, we, I mean, we can't sit still very long. I mean, you know, I, I can't sit still very long. I'm not, I'm not really a kid anymore either, but... You know, kids are full of energy and full of ambition and, and, and full of questions. You know, it, I've read different times, like the average four-year-old kid asks, I mean, hundreds of questions a day. And, you know, when we get to be in our 20s and 30s, we don't ask that many questions. We're not so inquisitive. But anyway, not everybody should become a teacher. We're not all cut out for that. We're not all... Um, able to to you know just to to put some of our frustrations aside to hide them to to have that patience and understanding that's needed and i see we got a good teacher watching right now but yeah hi katie uh but you know it, it it's hard and but it's 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 a reminder for us that as teachers and and we are all teachers i mean but we're parents i mean and and we've taught our kids and and those kinds of things. But, you know, we we all make mistakes. And he says that in, in the very second line. He says, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep his whole body in check. Well, there's nobody like that. I mean, there's just nobody that's, that's perfect and able to keep his or her body and emotions and everything in check all of the time. And and sometimes, you know, we, we beat ourselves up because maybe we're a little short with our kids or maybe we're, um, you know, not quite as patient and understanding as we should be. And, and that happens to all of us. But there's an admonition here that, you know, we need to be careful when we are around those that we are teaching, when we are around those that learn from us. And, you know, it's... Um, there's a song that I, I hear once in a while, you know, it's, I mean, his dad is wondering how his little boy, you know, learned to pray. I've been watching you, dad, and how he learned to do this. I've been watching you, dad. And, and, uh, the, and there's another one where the dad says, you better be careful where you walk, where you step. And the little boy says to his dad, you better watch where you step because I'm following in your footsteps. And it, it's reminders to us that you know, that as adults, as parents, as, as leaders of the community, as just as adults, kids are watching us. They, they see who we are and they see what we do and, and they, they know if we live the same as we talk. And so the admonition is, you know, to be wary, to be on guard, to be watching out um, because people are learning from you all the time. Yeah, they just, they really are. And... Uh, so, you know, a, a word of caution there, just a word of maybe a, of peace and patience. And, and at the end of the chapter, we're going to see a little bit more of that. And then, you know, he talks about, you know, putting a bit in the bridle in the mouth of a horse. And we can, you know, guide the horse where it wants to go. And on a ship, it's just this little bitty rudder on the backside that can steer this whole great big ship. And then he talks about the tongue. Uh, that little thing right in there. Yeah, and how often <laughs> that tongue can get us in trouble. And it's with this same tongue, he says, that we praise God and we curse each other. It's, you know, praises and curses come from this same tongue. You know, this, and, and it's so hard to bridle the tongue. You know, it's, uh, you know, there's a, 
it, it, saying that, you know, every once in a while, it's just amazing to see what comes out of my mouth or something like that, you know. It, and it is, you know, we, we don't always um, think before we speak, and sometimes what comes out of our mouths is just, what? You know, but, um, but this tongue, it, it, it's, it, it can be a weapon, and it can also be a blessing. And so the, the warning here again is just, you know, to be on guard. And he talks about a forest fire. And you know it doesn't take much, you know, uh, somebody having a campfire and the spark blows away or, or they walk away. I mean, just, I mean, a little bitty thing can, can ignite and burn a whole forest. And we've seen so many fires out in the western part of the United States this year. And, you know, and there's a variety of reasons for them, but, but often, it's someone either intentionally said it or someone was burning something and it got away. Yeah, and I remember being on the fire department and um, in the fall of the year, and I've seen a lot of smoke again this fall, people burning sloughs off and, you know, somebody will start a, a slough on fire or a ditch and the wind picks up and, you know, it just, I mean, that fire can just go so fast. You, you, you can't, you can't control it. And, and and James is likening this fire and, and the ship steering and all of those things to the way we talk, the way we speak, the way we act, the way we live, and, and all of that, you know, stuff that way. And just, you know, reminders that way that, you know, that, that out of our mouths come both praise and cursing. Whereas, you know, like he says, a stream. I mean, can a stream have both fresh water and brackish water? Can... Can an ocean, salt water from the ocean, can it become, you know, clean water? No, I mean, but, you know, so there are, you know, there are definite differences in a lot of things in, in creation. But we as human beings, I mean, we are capable at the same time, he says, uh, of praise and of cursing. I mean, it's, it's a double-edged sword and we've got we've to be careful and be watching out. Um, the end of the, you know, he, he says in verse 14, if you have bitter envy and selfish ambitions in your heart, don't be boastful and false to the truth. You know, if if your heart is filled with, with envy and, and just, I mean, if you're not, if you're not happy with yourself, if you just, if you look at other people and and say they got it so much better and, and have this poor me attitude, I mean, you know, James is saying, you know, this isn't beneficial. This isn't beneficial to have this poor me attitude or to have all of this envy and everything in our hearts. He says, for where, where there is envy and selfish amb ambition, there will be disorder and wickedness of every kind. And that is so true. It is so true you know, that when we start wishing for something that the other person has so badly that we, we figure out some way to get it. I mean, that's, that's not good, and, and that happens. It happens so much in society today. So uh, the ending, verse 17, I, just, I mean, here we go. This is, this is how we should live. He says, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace, trace of partiality or hypocrisy. Kind of echoing back to the fruits of the Spirit that Paul writes about in Galatians. You know, the fruits of the Spirit are peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, understanding, and a couple more that I'm just not going to pull out of my head right now. And so it's again a reminder that, you know, wisdom from above, you know, what God would have us do and be is, is to be pure and peaceable, to be gentle, to be humble, to, have, to yield good fruits, and then here, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. <laughs> partiality. Uh, oh, oh. I mean, we, we, we do. I mean, we have prejudices. We look at, at others, and I talk about that every once in a while. And it's just, it's admonitions for us to guard ourselves and the way we act, the way we look around at other places. And... Verse 18, in, in some ways, sounds a little strange. The, the last verse, he says, And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. A harvest of righteousness is sown. S-O-W-N. That's, you know, I planted in the springtime. And, but, you know, we, and 
And think about that. You know, in the springtime, the farmers, those of us that garden, go out and we put seeds in the ground or we put plants in the ground, you know, hoping for beans and peas and tomatoes and carrots and potatoes and, and wheat and barley and soybeans. We, we put all of these seeds in the ground and, and we say we are done seeding. The reality is, is though, we are seeding the harvest. When we put that seed in the ground, we are, we are planning for the harvest and, and we are planning and hoping for a bounty. And so James writes, a harvest of righteousness is sown. God has put in our hearts uh, this, this spirit of peace, the spirit of joy. God has put his own spirit within us. And this is, this is righteousness. This is being having a right relationship with God. This is, this is what God intends for us. He has put this, this idea within us. I don't know why I should just say it's an idea, but he has, he, had, he, has, he has made us right with himself because he has forgiven our sins. So the harvest of righteousness that God has sown in you and me is our salvation. It's our justification. It's our sanctification. It's our resurrection from the dead. This is what he's talking about by the harvest of righteousness is sown. The, the word of God is instilled in each and every one of us. You know, God said back in Jeremiah 31, I will write my word upon their hearts. I will put it in their minds and they will all know me. We have this spirit of righteousness. We have this spirit of knowledge of, of good and evil built within us that God gave us from the very beginning. And the spirit that was sown in us has been nurtured and cared for by the teachers. So I look back at, you know, verse one of this chapter, not all should become teachers because the teachers are the ones who nourish this harvest of righteousness that's sown within us. So may you, may you nurture the righteousness within those that you encounter today and always know God's blessings.